Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to interpret a mass spectrum showing fragmentation patterns for organic compounds. Now we looked at the mass spectrometer in the topic on mole calculations and if you haven't seen that video then you need to watch it now. Now we use a mass spectrometer to identify organic chemicals and I'm going to use the alkane pentane as my first example. In a mass spectrometer a beam of electrons is fired at our sample. This causes the sample to lose an electron, forming a positive ion. Scientists call this the molecular ion. This positive molecular ion moves down the mass spectrometer, and we get a spectrum like this. Now the mz ratio tells us the ratio between the mass and the charge of the molecular ion. However, because almost every molecular ion has a one positive charge, the mz ratio effectively tells us the mass of the molecular ion. As you can see, we have one prominent peak on the far right of the spectrum. This is called the molecular ion or M plus peak, and this tells us the relative mass of the molecule. Pentane has a relative molecular mass of 72, and this is shown by the molecular ion peak. Now you'll notice that we have a tiny peak, one unit to the right of the molecular ion peak. This peak is due to the presence of the isotope carbon 13 which represents around 1% of carbon atoms. Scientists call this the M plus 1 peak, and this does not play a role in our analysis of the spectrum. Now in practice, when we carry out mass spectrometry on an organic molecule, we get a range of different peaks. That's because organic molecules break up or fragment in the mass spectrometer. I'm showing you here pentane breaking into two fragments. When fragmentation happens, a bond breaks, and we form an ion and a radical. Only the ion can be detected by the mass spectrometer, in this case the butyl ion. However, bear in mind that the fragments could just as easily form a methyl ion and a butyl radical. So in practice, both fragments will be seen on the mass spectrum. I'm showing you here the fragments produced by breaking carbon to carbon bonds in pentane. All of these four fragments will produce a peak on the mass spectrum. We can work out the mz ratio of each peak by adding the relative atomic masses of the atoms in the fragment. Now there are a couple of points to notice about this. Firstly, some fragments are more stable than others, so each fragment will not have the same abundance. And secondly, the most abundant fragment is assigned a relative abundance of 100%. Scientists call this the base peak. In the spectrum I'm showing here, the most abundant fragment is the propyl ion. Now in practice, the carbon to hydrogen bonds can also break in the mass spectrometer, so we can end up with a whole range of peaks due to this. I'm showing you here the simplified mass spectrum for propan-1-ol. I'd like you to identify the fragments forming the peaks shown, so pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, so propan-1-ol will form the molecular ion peak with an mz ratio of 60. The other peaks are caused by the fragments shown. Again, I should point out that I've not included any fragments formed by the breakage of a carbon to hydrogen bond. Okay, here's a final mass spectrum to interpret. This is the simplified mass spectrum for the chemical methyl ethanoate. Again, I'd like you to identify the fragments forming the peaks shown. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, so methyl ethanoate will form the molecular ion peak with an mz ratio of 74 and the other peaks are caused by the fragments shown. Notice that two different fragments can create the peak at 59. Okay, so hopefully now you can interpret a mass spectrum showing fragmentation patterns for organic compounds.